Then we have some specific studies I can show you. 45 adult men and women with symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis were randomly assume, uh, assigned to take probiotics or placebo once a day for 60 days in addition to their medications. There was greater improvement than the patients who took the, the probiotics. So you're not only healing up the gut with the probiotics, but you see a marked difference in inflammation levels, joint pain, stiffness, and that sort of thing within a few weeks of starting to take the probiotics. Um, sometimes we end up doing an elimination diet. Now, I'll tell you, this is probably one of the most interesting things that I've noticed or worked on in the last several years. So we, have pe we, we do a complete whole person approach to this, where people restrict the brow foods and no dairy and low fat and eat a plant-based diet and don't get vaccinated and all that kind of stuff. And in, most, in, in all cases, people get better, but sometimes you have people that will say, I know something's clearly wrong because on some days it's a little worse than others. So we do an elimination diet where we restrict their intake to just a handful of foods. And then after, if they become asymptomatic on that very limited diet, we know it's a food trigger. And then we start having them introduce one food at a time. And what we found, which is very interesting, is that you know, people talk about nightshades being bad for autoimmune patients. It's usually not nightshades, and even when it is, it's not all of them. And so um, I had uh, one person who, when she eats bananas, it triggers her psoriasis to flare up again. Now, who would have thought bananas? Um, another one of my folks, uh, corn, did it. No other food. Um, so the bottom line is that it's highly unpredictable. Um, it's led to a lot of identifying triggers that we probably would not have uh, paid much attention to. I never would have thought to tell a psoriasis patient to um, reduce their intake or avoid bananas. We wouldn't have found that out any other way. So um, that's what we can do if we still have symptoms that we need to get rid of. Um, one thing that, that is an issue with autoimmune patients is that a lot of times they have comorbidities due to the drugs that they've taken, um, the other conditions they've developed, and so we have to work on those things too. Loss of bone mineral density is real common, um, which can be resolved with sunshine, making sure the GI tract is repaired, exercise builds bones. You know, bone is living tissue. You get a new skeleton every year, but you've got to stimulate that with movement, and we do have a very sedentary population. I mean, I don't know, I, I remember every time we talk about sedentary people, I remember that episode of Friends when Joey and Chandler got those black chairs. Does anybody remember that? And they sat in those chairs with the remotes and their phones, and they did not get up. They even had their pizzas delivered across the hall and brought over so they wouldn't have to get up out of the chair, right? Well, we're not too far from that right now. I mean, I have people that avoid movement at all costs, and I used to do that. I used to put my garbage cans on the car and drive them to the street so I wouldn't have to move, right? Well, nobody told me not moving was a bad idea for the first 20 years of my adult life, but it's a very bad idea. So anyway, you can rebuild your bones if you're willing to do exercise. Um, Flare-ups are usually a result of non-compliance on the diet or stress. Uh, but what happens is the flare-ups, which almost everybody has, they become less common, more space between them, less severe, until one day somebody wakes up and says, I can't remember the last time I had an episode. And then we know that we've really put the disease in remission. Um, one thing that we do too with people, um, I don't know how many of you know about True North in California. Um, they probably are going to name a building after me. I've sent a few hundred people out there because I love those people. They do a great job. And water-only fasting has been shown to be effective. And just so you know, the studies that I'm going to show you here, and I won't read them to you, it's just that people get better when they fast, and then, and then they get worse when food is reintroduced. And it's not because you can't eat and have to fast for the rest of your life. It's because these studies show that people stop eating anything and fast. Guess what they do when they start eating again? They go back to eating dairy and high gluten foods and too much animal food. And, you know, so going out to True North and fasting and then going back home and ordering a steak, not going to help you a whole lot, right? So you see, but, but the point I was trying to make is that none of these studies I'm showing you here were done by the people who own True North. All right, so this is, this is all done by, by uh, other people. So what we'll do many times for people who have had autoimmune disease for a long, long time is we'll get them on a health-promoting diet, which is, I think, better if you send somebody to fast after that, um, and then send them out to True North, and you see time after time, as these studies show, that people get better. And so that's become a, a staple uh, recommendation for people who are in a position to do it. And it's actually not that uh, expensive. Um, their, their rates are very, very low, less than the deductible, if you're going to be on drugs and have procedures for the rest of your life because you have autoimmune disease. Um, one thing that this study points out that I think is interesting is just fasting improves the permeability of the gut. 
Now, it doesn't mean you don't take probiotics, and Dr. Goldhammer at True North recommends them, but, but uh, just fasting starts to ha allow the gut to heal. One reason, you're lowering the inflammation levels from eating all the bad stuff that you're eating that got you there in the first place. Um, and then this is a, th th this is a typical example um, of uh, patients who, I think I, let me see if I, uh, patients who improve when they're fasting and then they get worse when they start eating again. So we see that all the time. Um, and I won't read these to you, but, uh, but there is quite a bit of evidence out there. Uh, one after, so see how many there are, right? Um, and for auto, all kinds of autoimmune diseases, we're talking about um, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, et cetera. So, um, by the way, the one that you can't reverse is type 1 diabetes, whether you fast or whether you don't, all right? So the best thing to do is, um, is water-only fasting followed by a program of dietary excellence that, um, uh, that um, uh, like the one that we've been talking about. Now, one thing I'll mention is I think that fasting should be done in a supervised environment because um, somebody should be checking every day. So I tell people, don't try to fast for two weeks at home on your own. I don't think it's a very good idea, particularly if people are taking medications. They may have to come off of medications before they can fast, or the fasting itself may make the medication withdrawal have to happen. So that should be done with some supervision. So I'm a fan. And um, if you've never been out there, it's, it's a wonderful place. They do your laundry. You have cable TV. They have lectures. You forget that you're not eating. Uh, even though they're preparing food for the people that are being refed and the people who aren't fasting, it, it really doesn't bother you after a while. And uh, most wonderful medical care, I think. I wish we had one in every single city. I think it would be terrific.